Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the round table of dim lighting, your boys are talking to <laughs> each other boy. again. Uh, we're gonna be going down the rabbit hole again, but it'll be a different rabbit hole. Who knows where the conversation will take us. We don't know if we're always going to do this. In fact, I can promise you that we're not always going to do this, but we're gonna do it again this week. I promise you that you can't pin us down in any rabbit's hole. That's right. Or in oh, in, is, in going on, that, down we, rabbit's holes. Is that, well, don't say rabbit's holes. Just say rabbit holes, because now you're talking about, if we're talking about rabbit's holes, you're talking about or rabbit's orifices. orifices. And we don't yeah, do that. We, yeah, I promise not, you, we're not going to do that. I don't want a picture of that. You don't want a picture of that. Um, I'm sure you can get a picture of that on the internet, but again, that's not the kind of thing that I ever search for. My front yard um, has all types of holes in it gophers and pathways that have been plumped up from underneath gophers. And I believe it is gophers. And um, I, you know I Googled, to, you, know, you know what to do, don't I you? I Googled what, to, what, what do gophers go for? If you want them to leave, how do you like, get how them? Do to, you lure them how out? do you get them to go? That's okay. why they're called gophers. Not and, true, but okay. And um, I got like a big um, screw top of some sort of. It looked like fertilizer, and you sprinkle it over your yard, and it's supposed to repel them. Gopher repellent. Gopher repellent. Don't uh. work. Don't work. Because that was that was six months ago, and what that does according to the internet is it runs them into the, your neighbor's yard and then they put they throw that stuff out yeah and then they run back into your yard I, you and know, then the the landscape the, the the person who mows the grass they just mow the grass and then they don't what they do is they don't walk across your lawn and mush down the gopher humps first so you know what happens like with with the freshly mowed lawn which looks great I, I have a little patch of grass in my front yard. it's a That's patch it. of grass um the guy mows it and Seven minutes. Yeah, especially, but it. I'm just asking if I'm going to take a t few minutes to walk across it and push down the humps first because he mows straight across. You get short hairs there. It gone. It's like dirt all the way down to dirt. It just he. It's it's like someone tried to spell in some sort of gopher Sanskrit all over the like the front edge of my lawn. Well, have you thought that maybe dirt. they are trying to communicate with you? Have you like have you have you just have you looked at the lawn and just. I can't read anything? go for Sanskrit. No, no, no. But just think about it for just one second. Just seriously, just go with me here. What if there are people? What if you know? I've always thought this. I, I've thought about this a million times. What if all of a sudden I wake up one day and I'm a gopher? Not a gopher, but I would be like a squirrel or a insect. And how do I communicate to my family and my friends that yeah, I am that animal? Which is why you wrote about it way back in that I'm a thoughtful guy. You talked about being an ant. Think about if I was turned into an ant. I want my loved ones to know, so I thought of a plan. I gather twigs and leaves and write my name on the ground. Then I wait for my family and friends to cry around. Exactly. I've you actually about thought about it for years. So, and if the if and the, that didn't put it to bed. What if those people? What if those are gophers? What if those pe gophers are people? Are they spelling anything? That's all I'm asking. Have you have you looked closely enough? Have you stepped back? Have you gotten a drone view of your mm, patch of grass? Idea. You got to get a drone view. Well, I can stand on the roof of my house. I'm not getting a drone. I, I, my experience with drones. You've been on the roof? I've been on the roof, but I didn't look down at the go for Sanskrit. You gotta do that next time. I just looked out. I looked out. Because I look at the mountain. Where all this is leading, just so you know, I'm gonna say something that may be unpopular. Y the only way to get rid of gophers, you gotta murder them. I'm just saying it. I'm just, they're pests, you gotta kill them. You know, I know it's unpopular, but the gophers are just, I mean, I guess there is some sort of catch and release but I mean, give me a break. They're gonna go, they're gonna do the same thing elsewhere and you may be like, well, the gophers have just as much right to the land as we do. Well, not really. We're humans, we're a lot smarter and more capable. So. I mean, we've hemmed them in with uh, a concrete curb and yeah. sidewalkage stuff and I mean, if a you, house. I, I'm not gonna argue with you if you wanna somehow flush them out like a cartoon with like a like a hose and they come out on top of the, the fountain of water and then you put them in a bag and take them someplace. Mm. If you wanted to go, go through that trouble, that's great. I, it, but that, I'm gonna kill them if what? they're in my yard. I'll put that on Vine. Oh, yeah, I mean, you, you get the clicks. Vine's coming back. I heard I'm about gonna that. Put it on, I'm gonna put it on Vine. Um, no, I'm not gonna do that. If I ate the gopher, would that redeem this whole conversation? I don't think you have to. I, 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 I rustled up the gopher and, and we ate him. I mean, y you would be so above reproach if you ate the gophers. You would be without blame. 
if you killed and ate the gophers. But I think I think this is a, almost an insect situation. And like use the pelts for like clothing for my youngest child. That, you know what, you might be onto something. How Lando many, goes to how second many, grade How and many like gophers, gophers pelts. make a pair of pants? Well, how many gophers make all that tunnelage in my front yard? I'd say at least twenty. I think gophers, twenty gophers. You think gopher skin is thick enough to make pants out of? Well, in in in, in L.A., you can make some shorts. I think you can make you, a t-shirt. Uh, maybe you might make a pair of underwear. <laughs> gopher gopher thongs. <laughs> Ooh, you, does the fur go on the inside or the outside of a gopher thong? Uh, I think you probably could do both. Why am I asking you? Like you like you know? I've got some fur thongs. <laughs> I've got some. I've got some fur thong thoughts. I've got some thoughts on fur thongs. So what we're saying is, is that you are for the step one is you go on the roof and you make sure they're not humans that have been somehow trapped in gopher bodies and they're trying to communicate with you and you're their only hope because if they're humans, we got to we can't just kill them and eat them. But if you determine that they're not humans, now if it, that if that happened, I would take a picture and I'd put it on Reddit. You yeah. gotta know where these things go. If you're gonna put a hose in there and a gopher's gonna pop out, well that's gonna go on the new vine. You gotta get a really powerful hose though, like but it, a fireman's hose. But if but if I take a, an aerial shot and something is spelled out by a gopher like, gophers are humans too. That's a like, Reddit that's situation. That's a Reddit situation, which I've, I've, I've started getting into Reddit. Well I've been there for a while. I'm looking for you now, because I'm on there. I'm not, I'm not an active poster or commenter. I got a new phone. It, you know, I'm not an active phone I'm user. I'm a lurker. I'm like, I, a, I'm like a gopher of Reddit. But I was like, I should, out of guilt, I should put an app on my phone to uh, to just experience phone entertainment, which is not entertainment, which I consider like YouTube videos. That's what we are, entertainers. You but, downloaded a game. Is that what you're? Is this what you're no, saying? No, I down. I looked. I was like looking on the App Store, and then Reddit was recommended for some reason because I think they revamped the app um, a, a few months ago. They mm -hmm. were touting it. I was like, you know what? I've heard of this Reddit. Yeah, the front page of the internet, if you will. Yeah, I mean, they will. That's what they. We say. had the freaking inventor of Reddit. On Air Biscuits. Alexis Ohanian, who now is married to Serena Williams. One of the greatest athletes of all time. Yeah, crazy. They have a baby together. Well, like, yeah. That guy sat right here. That guy signed this freaking table that we're sitting at right and now. And I never even went on his website. And I didn't. I don't think I told him that. No, no. I Maybe did. I did. I did. <laughs> I probably did. I don't remember that conversation. I'll have to listen to it, or you can listen to it and that's, tweet at that's me. That's one degree away from Serena Williams, Link. You yeah. Think about that. Um. So now, I guess I can I can strike up conversations with him because I'm on Reddit, um, and I'll do that sometimes before I'm going to sleep. And I know I'm developing a bad habit. Oh, don't yeah, don't do that. Don't be surfing the interwebs on Reddit right before you go to right bed. before I doze that's off. That's a horrible habit. I'm trying to remember the last thing. The thing that strikes me is the tone with which people comment on Reddit. It is such a specific type of conversation. Like It's no, elevated. No matter what you, well, it's re, I would say it's refined to be a very specific thing. It's, um, it's, it's gotta be funny. Like if you click on anything, like if it's cute, if it's interesting, if it's an infinite loop of something that's perfectly looped, that's my favorite thing on Reddit right now, like perfectly looped mini videos or gifs or whatever they happen to be. I'm such an I'm such an out of touch uncle. Here. Yeah, I can see that. Um, but if I click on it or like a weird animal video, like the the first comment that I'm going to read is going to be something that is funny but in a very specific way like snarky and adding something to it. It's not it's not anything like and I didn't know this. I mean, I if you're on Reddit, I know this is obvious to you, listener, and it's just it's just part of your DNA if you're a redditor. But do you know what I'm talking about? Like the snarky, smart, um, lots of times cynical. But it's like, okay, yeah, what's posted is funny, but what I'm writing underneath it is also funny, and I know stuff, and I, I'm I'm adding, yeah. I, and then I, I'm talking about it. I'm talking about things that I know and like. But I would say that while that's true, it's also. Or, 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 or trolling people. It's per, it's pertinent more often than not. It, 
contrast it with a YouTube commenter, okay? Well, a lot of YouTube commenters, they can just comment on something frivolous. Well, because they're or seeing, she, well, you it's know, like, because it's they're not, seeing something, I don't know, I, I guess there are videos too, but you don't have anybody talk about the color, the type of shirt that somebody has on like we've already gotten comments about your jacket. Just so, just so you know, on the, on the video version, the video of, this version of this, which is now on the Good Mythical Morning channel every Saturday, right? Um, we've already gotten comments about your jacket, right? Mm -hmm. I'd say there are there's a half a do there's a dozen or more comments about your jacket already, mm -hmm. and then there's comments about the comments about your jacket. There's thumbs up. Where did Link get his jacket? I love Link's jacket, and you know what? It's a fine jacket. I am admiring the jacket. I'm glad you got the jacket, but you're glad I got the jacket. But I I'm, would ne I would never personally comment about the, right. the jacket uh, on a YouTube video because it it seems like well why don't I just talk about the why don't I comment on the the subject matter of the video I think that actually the, the substantive parts of the video even a dumb video like we make a lot of dumb videos but I, but on Reddit you're not going to get a comment about the jacket you're going to get a comment about the thing that is the post is about. Um, and then people may take issue with certain things, but that's why I said I feel like it's a slightly ele elevated conversation that isn't, and there's also not a lot of self-promotion. Uh, there's not like a lot of come and subscribe to my channel or the, the, the I see so many comments now on YouTube videos like, hey you, scrolling through the comments, you're beautiful just the way you are. I mean, come, <laughs> come give me a freaking break. I mean, honestly. I, I, oh, really? Because yes. I'm like. Oh, thank you. No, I no, I don't care for that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's I I'm not. I don't care for that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. You don't know the person's beautiful. <laughs> Who's reading it? I'm not complaining about the, Reddit comments. The, I'm agreeing with you. The and person I, I do that you're saying is beautiful may be about to go out and commit a heinous crime. You don't know that they're beautiful. I'm not talking about physical beauty. I'm just talking about, you know, moral turpitude. Is that a word? I, Turpentine. I what, what I'm saying is that. Obviously, uh, you can you can tell I'm I'm ranting a little a bit about the nature of YouTube comments, but I'm just saying that's one of the reasons I like to go. Uh, uh, so you're saying the Reddit, Reddit comments are refreshing. Uh, I don't know if I'm to that point. I'm fascinated by them. I am not annoyed by them. But like, there's there's like, there was an animal clip because I think I followed one of these like animal threads. Yeah, I got to have an animal thread. And or um, two or three. Is, and it, is it a gopher thread? It was. No, is it, there, there probably is a go. Well, for it. it was water, and then the top said, "Wait for it," and I'm like, "Well, wait for it." That's that's how you're gonna meme this thing, and then it's like something underneath the water, and like like a high angle shot from like a phone, basically. A phone, man. For all I for all I could care, and I'm like, "Whoa, what is this creature? It's it's kind of." It's kind of big. It's just like it's underneath the water. It's like a Loch Ness monster. This thing, oh no, this thing's about to surface. It's like it's 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 crawling. No, it's swimming. It's the Loch Ness monster type of thing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it emerges from the water in like a huge flamboyant way. And I realize it's the huge antlers of a moose. Okay. Oh, and then it's a freaking entire moose just comes up, emerges out of the water, and it just freaked me out. I was like, I didn't see that coming. I'm glad I waited for it. Yeah, wait for <laughs> I'm it. I'm glad you said wait for it. And then I'm like, I'm just learning Reddit, so I just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the comments about this. Like, are, you know, and on YouTube, what would the comments be? Whoa, a moose. I like that moose's shirt. <laughs> or like that muse is muse. That muse is awesome. That muse is beautiful. You're uh, just as beautiful as that moose. Oh, uh, subscribe to me. I've got moose videos, and I don't know enough about God, how Reddit it. works. That maybe that's happening, and those are um, filtered out. But the first comment was um, was about someone talking about how it was like a smart aleck comment about how. Um, the number one predator of a moose is uh, an orca. Orca. A killer whale. Killer whale. Shamu, if you will. And then somebody came in there and said, well, um, moose have been known to, been, to uh, have been killed by killer whales, but the primary predator of moose are wolves on land. And you know, so it's like, 
someone who knows some stuff is is uh, is coming in there and saying stuff, and I'm like, ooh, now they're getting into it. And then I, like, lo and behold, 15 minutes later, I'm still reading the comments, and now the conversation is strictly about wolves. You would not, <laughs> more specifically, you would not believe how big a wolf is. Yeah, okay. Like that's the specific now, thread Okay, now. so that's a little contradictory to what I said, saying that, that it's, it's on topic. It's not on topic, but, but that, it's fascinating that something about um, a, a swimming moose, literally the whole thread was Im, impassioned people talking about encounters they've had with wolves and how, quote, big they are. Like wolves you, are bigger than you. Would, you, you would not believe, believe how, how big, big a wolf, a wolf is. is, and I'm just like, just my thumb just can't keep up with this conversation. And you know what? I'm 20 minutes into a thread about how big wolves are and how they, you know, and it made you a better person. Just face it. And now it's like, well, maybe you've seen a dog that looks like a wolf. Okay, you don't. You don't have to. Re but you don't have to recreate. That the is thread not here. a wolf. Because incidentally, segue. That's what we're going to do. And we're not going to talk about wolves. We, it might come back to how big wolves are, but uh, we are going to essentially do the same thing. We're going to start a conversation and then we're going to go into the rabbit hole, uh, wherever the thread might lead. Uh, but first, we're going to remind you all that just because you didn't go and see us on the tour of mythicality doesn't mean you can't have a piece. A what? A piece. A piece. Of, a piece of it. Piece of it. Here's part of the piece. Yeah, you can Show get the the official limited edition out of print, but still currently for a limited time in stock. Retin Link Tour of Mythicality T-shirt and poster that has the same graphic, but also has all of the locations that we visited. Own a piece of Retin Link Tour history. Our first ever tour. Maybe not our last. I'm not. I'm not prepared to say yet. Mythical dot store because I don't know for all your shopping needs. Well, all the shopping needs that we can meet because there's lots of things that you might want to buy that we don't sell. Nah, I need to come up with a better slogan. You know what I need? Everything that it takes to make my breakfast smoothie. This morning. Okay. Well, uh, eh, hmm. Okay. You want to talk about that no, right now? I just, I just want to, I want to get it out of my system. I promise I won't take more than sixty seconds. But I just want you to know. I bet you sixty dollars you'll take more than sixty seconds because you what? can't speak about something for less than a minute. Thirty seconds. Oh, look who's talking. All of my ingredients. I had them and I made the smoothie, and they all ran out at the same time. Like the spinach and the protein powder and the uh, the peanut butter and the frozen blueberries. You know, I make it the same every single morning. I, oh really? I put the recipe in the in the mythical newsletter way back if you're a subscriber so you can drink along with me the breakfast of champions. And it just felt it felt great to know I was out of things but That's then I 30 could, seconds. I could get it in time to not be out of it in the morning but to have it all end at the same time and go in the trash can was like the best feeling I've had all day. My day started off great for that reason. Is that it? That's it, see? Okay, that was about 50 seconds. Okay, um, here is a envelope, or an envelope. It's a different envelope. The people who use correct grammar say. But I like, I don't, I, you know, the whole a and thing seems unnecessary to me. Mark Ham, oh gosh, this is Mark Hamill posing as a person with a shorter name, Mark Ham. What really happens to all the things that you lose over your lifetime? What would you do if at the end of your life someone gave you a box full of all that stuff? All the stuff you lose wow. over your lifetime. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, the first part of the question is mm, many different answers to that, but this this proposition of having a box with all the things that you've lost, well, the first thing that I think about, of course, is socks because this is fresh on the mind. Fresh on the mind, you're looking for a sock? Well, you may remember, shout out to Rhett MC on Instagram, that's Don't. me. <laughs> Gosh, uh, that's gross, man. Yeah. Man, um, Reddit would burn you hey, for that. Podcast rules are different, man. Uh, anyway, it's a really good Instagram feed where I happen to post all my pictures. <laughs> Um, 
You may recall one of my uh, one of my non selfie posts. You didn't want me to talk about my smoothie experience so that you could promote <laughs> your own Instagram again. Um, was a collection. Well, actually, what happened was what happened was is my wife uh, had decided that we were going to. Uh, she, she's like, we're gonna do sock matching time every week. <laughs> every week she's scheduling, like, what? I'm like, oh, fun, 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 sock matching time. She said every week we're gonna get together and we're gonna bring our socks and we're gonna match them up. She, she just had it in her mind that it would be a fun family activity if we were to take all the socks and all four of us were to des descend on this pile of socks like a pack of wolves. I told you it would come back to wolves. You wouldn't believe Leave how, how big, big a wolf, wolf is. A lot bigger than a dog. The legs are super long. Even if it's you like two breed, or three dogs. Even if you like, there's some breeds of dogs which are much more closely relate, related to wolves, but they're still nowhere near That's the size of a wolf. That's not true. That's not true. They're I'm not quoting more, a Redditor. I'm they're not, not more closely related. They're just, they're, they're just, they have been less altered by artificial selection. But they're not more closely. I mean, I guess maybe you yeah, use that course, term. I mean, course, it's, but yeah. it's not like they're relatives. It's not like they have a family reunion and they come back and say we're closer to the wolves. Evolutionarily speaking, mm. that some dogs are further down a tree than others. Man, it's not really a tree if it's, you're talking about artificial selection versus natural selection. Dogs are the way dogs are because of artificial selection, not natural selection. Well, but but in terms of drawing a tree, it doesn't. That still. It doesn't make a difference. You, you, who's drawing a tree? I am, and I'm saying when man takes over the process of evolution, it's still a branch on the same tree. And it's in the further a wiener dog is further away from a wolf. It's like when a Siberian. It's husky. like one of those cell phone towers that looks like a tree. Yes. Anyway, she thought it would be a good idea for us to descend on this pile, and she's like, "Everybody, pair your socks up, and then take them to your room." I think you're just describing laundry. Did everybody bring their? Yeah, she tried to make it seem like a party. And, oh. I, and halfway through, <laughs> I realized it wasn't a party. <laughs> halfway through, I realized there's nothing fun about this at all. But after I had paired all my socks and the kids had paired their socks and my wife had paired her socks, we were left with a collection of rogues. Rogue socks. And uh, I arranged them in a perfect square and took a picture, uploaded it to Red MC on Instagram. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't one of my most liked posts ever or anything, but uh, it was pretty artful. But what I said that time, and this is this is a while ago, I mean, maybe a year, I don't know, a year ago, is that I was like, we gotta do something about these socks. I was like, first of all, I know I don't do, really do the laundry, and so I can only, I, I can't really say too much, but I was like, it can't be this hard to keep up with the socks. It's like every time I even begin to broach that a little bit, my wife just gets very agitated. Mm -hmm. um, and so I can't really go there, but I was like, uh, we gotta get rid of these rogue socks. It's like, we gotta get them out of the mix. Cause she's like, well, but they turn up. She's like, the socks eventually turn up and then you can make the pairs. Right, right, right. But I'm like, if they don't turn up after two or three cycles, they ain't, they're gone. Lost until the end of your life. So we came up when with you're the, given the box. Right. So we came up with the idea to start over. S sock ground zero. And actually last night. Last night? Well, the other night I went on Amazon and, and me and the boys picked out socks. And me and me and Locke picked <laughs> Hey boys, let's have my version of a sock party. <laughs> which is just buying a bunch of new socks indiscriminately. No, 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 no. It was so the, the new system is. I'm intrigued by this. All the socks are the same. Mm -hmm. My socks and Locke's yes. socks are the same. And same exact? Same exact socks, so. Well, he's a man now, so, or you're a boy now. Yeah, either way, young at heart. Either way, we share socks. Yep. So there's none of this, like Locke socks, Rhett socks. Shepard's smaller, he gets his own sock. Locke and I decided on, well, I'll show you. I see where you're going with this as you, are you you're pulling up a sock? No. Not, okay. not a sponsor, Dickies. Di this is actually a work sock, but you know what? I'm working all the time. And uh, it's, it's it's just a it's thick it's black sock with a white gray bottom and then bottom. it says Dickies, Dickies right there on the toe. It's kinda hard to see that part. You don't have to see it to believe it. And how, is that a crew sock? What are we talking about? It's I, a, I couldn't a, see yeah, the top yeah, of half it. Half-calf crew, yeah. 
Crusac. Yeah, right. You know, it's it's down right now, but you know, and uh, it's a it's an affordable sock. That was that was goal number one. And I go, I like black socks because basically what you're saying is between two people in your house, you're you know you've bought a whole bunch of socks and then they all go together. It's just, you know, you just find two and they automatically go together. There's no search. Yeah, yeah, and Shepard got gray socks. So they're different. And yeah. then Jessie just kept her socks because leave her Totally out different. So, so then last For night. Her, socks is like a form of expression. All right? the socks came in a box, a socks box. And I got a them box out of socks. and I was like, <laughs> this is gonna be incredible. Now this is a freaking sock party. Let's take these socks out. Let's put them in our drawers. And I mean, not our pants, but you know, the drawers and let's, Put, let's throw all the other socks away, or let's give the socks to Goodwill, whatever. And so then you giving you giving one no 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 like odd no, no, out no, 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 socks no. one socks trash, old pairs of socks that don't fit the new system, which is all my socks are the same, the same as Locks and Shepherd's socks are yeah, all the yeah. same. Get thrown out, get give given away. Now yes, but but she wouldn't go for this. What? Speaking of gophers, I knew we'd come back to gophers because you would not believe she how big a gopher was, she saw these socks and she these Nike black socks and she was like, "Well, we can we, we, keep we, we can just keep these." They're good I was like, socks. "But they're not Dickies. They're, they're paired together. They're nice. They ruin the system because now all of a sudden there's going to be a rogue Nike sock swimming in the Dickies." I don't think may she might have tuned out at some point during your party. Yeah. So because, there's, uh, I didn't yeah. succeed. It's, oh, it's not all Dickies. No. Nope. Now you're sneaking socks and taking them out of the in house. my drawer. The, it's the all... Nikes have to go. I'm with. I, I well, I'm I, a little I'll upset th- about this. I'll throw them away later. I mean, she won't even know. She won't even know. The sock phantom can come. So that that's how I've solved this problem in my house. I got a few follow up questions. Are you telling me you've committed to a crew sock length sock? Because it, what about a no show? Because I think that's pretty important. Okay, I'm if glad it you was, asked. If it was me, I would have said, you know what? Right now, at this juncture of my life, even at this point in in my, I'll just show. Look, I'll just show you here. <clears throat> look at that black sock, black pants, hairy, ankly, white strip in the middle is my flesh. Because if I'm wearing a shoe, you can't tell that I'm wearing a sock. It's a no-show sock. Well, that's you familiar. That's a. And and that's a, not quite. That's not a super no show. A super no a super, show is nope, not a super no show. It's just it's well, given my shoes, it's a no show. Given the particular pair of shoes that you have on right yeah, now, yeah, I'm not wearing like a loafer or a penny loafer. Penny loafer. Um, now you, uh, but so that's that. That's what I would choose, and that's what I'm going to choose because I'm going to do this. Okay, well, l- I don't, let's all do this mythical beast. I don't want to throw a wrench into your sock party, but. Let me just say, I did also buy. Crew socks. No. I, I mean. Um, I bought no-show white athletic socks. White? For the gym time. That's risky, because even that little peaking of white coming out is just cheap. You should have gotten black for those, but you didn't want to. You didn't want to mix it up with your with your longies. The only exactly exactly link you yeah. you saw where I was going with this. They were white, even though I would prefer them to be black. They were white, so that they I had could, to be. So the sock party will be easier. Now, let me also say, I have an extreme no-show sock uh, from previous decisions. Right, that looks like a ballerina and slipper. It, it's basically this little gray thing that they sell at Urban Outfitters. You know, where if you, it's basically, if it's, any, not, if it's anybody, not. You don't want the show, socks to show. You don't want people to know that you even think about socks. That's called a no no sock. Right. It's like yeah, and it barely fits around. I mean, it, it's the type of. It's sock. embarrassing to be caught with these socks on yeah, and nothing else. If you, if somebody sees you walking around in just those socks. And no shoes. It just drains them any masculinity that you may you have, have right to, out. You have to have a backstory for those. You have to have a story. My story is if I'm ever caught in those, I just say it, they're therapeutic, <laughs> and then I just leave it at that. <laughs> because people don't like to ask medical questions for toe circulation. They're like, oh, he's got a condition. I don't want to ask about it. <laughs> <laughs> like like TSA. <laughs> TSA gives you luck. You're like. Oh, Therapeutic. <laughs> These are my therapeutic socks. Can I leave them on? I mean, I signed up for pre-check just to avoid having to say anything about therapeutic socks, right? Because you want to wear them sometimes. Anyway, I kept those. 
uh, because those are so distinct and I have uh, a, two pairs of shoes, you know these shoes, those little, uh, they're actually a Timberland shoe that those little gray shoes that I have that are almost cloth, the simplest shoe. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's called yeah. like Earth something from Timberland. <laughs> and I love those shoes. I got a couple of pairs and you have to wear no, if you wear socks with those shoes, dorky time. Yeah, so you, you, yeah it's <laughs> like clocking into dorky yeah. town. <laughs> <laughs> so, Check it back in, sir. <laughs> but the, I'm sorry that you missed me for a few hours when I was wearing no show socks, but I'm back but, in Darky Town. But, Where, where's <laughs> where's my assignment, sir? Uh, but the problem is, is that my sh my feet. The lemonade concession stand. My feet. Arnold Palmer's three for a dollar. <laughs> sweat like you wouldn't believe. You know, I don't sweat under my arms. I sweat from the I sweat from the ends. I sweat from. The hands, the hands and the feet. The extremities. Yeah, I don't know. Something about the height and the centrifugal force. Right. There's, so a, there's a lot of, there's a lot swing, of leverage. You swing the sweat out of your extremities. Right, and uh, so anyway, I kept those. They're easy to keep up with. And then I kept my dress socks, but they're, 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 they're polluting the drawer. So I took all the dress socks because I never wear dress socks unless we do something where you have to wear dress socks. And so I took the dress socks, I put them in a shoe box put it in the top of the closet. For that special time when you need to dress pull socks. out a dress sock. And so you I, never will by the that's way. That's the system so far. You might as well burn that box or give it to the Goodwill. You'll never access that box. I don't believe you, I think I will. Ah. I'm only one day in though. I started wearing dressier socks because I would, um, we, you know, I have dress socks because I get a new pair every time we would go on Fallon because people, you know, you throw your leg up and then you expose the sock and then yeah. people will comment on it. We gotta do the, double, like, again, leg, the that, double leg thing. It's that YouTube comment thing. You guys wanna, we post, hey look, we were on the Tonight Show and you're like, let me comment about your socks. Yeah, we feed you know, right into we it. We feed right we into it. We should wear dickies next time. And um and talk about it yeah. and not get paid. Yeah. Hopefully there will be a next time. You know, we had that falling out with Jimmy last time we were yeah, in there. Yeah, I know, you said that thing about, yeah. yeah no, yeah. no. <laughs> we're just joking. <laughs> Jimmy, you know we're joking, uh, you're, and we yeah, know yeah, you're yeah, listening. That's right, you Best of believe friends. how big a wolf is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, trying, just trying to. Goker, gophers are people too. I mean, we got a couple of things we could throw on t-shirts already. Gophers may be people too. You wouldn't gophers are people too. Yeah, that's probably a better shirt. Write it. It's an aerial view. Looks like this a is the goat. shirt design. It's a front yard. It's, it's a front yard. It's your patch of grass. Yeah, it's my patch of grass, and then and then the the gophers have done it. So anyway, mm. when I open my sock drawer and I see those dress socks, it's kind of like a timeline of like pleasant memories that I've had with Jimmy Fallon. Honestly, yeah, yeah. And I I'm kind of attached to those. And then Christy got me a pair of camouflage socks that have little wiener dogs on them that look like Jade. And I'm pretty. Those are, I call those my favorite socks. Oh no! But you also got some from a from a mythical beast. Yep. And then a mythical beast um, on tour in the meet and greet line gave me and you, you too. You got a pair. We I, each got a pair of socks with an actual printed picture of our dogs on them. So I have yeah. Jade's face on my on my socks. Yeah. The people who follow the Red MC Instagram account know about my barber socks. And those those socks are important to me too. Um, Christy was mad, by the way, when I brought those home because she said, I was gonna get you some of those for your Christmas stocking. Uh, she had a sock party planned. She had, yeah, she had to cancel it. But even, so I've got all these special dress socks up there, but then I keep is looking it, for these black, in? the top drawer, the, you, the one closest to my face. Is it all socks in there or do you got different, how do you, how do you separate the dress socks from the regular socks? There's an organizer on the left side and it's got like little. You have a dress. You have an organizer in the drawer. In the drawer, yeah. And in that, should have known that. There's like a lighter, and there's like a candle or two. This is my bedroom. You know, you gotta have. You have a candle in the sock drawer. I, it's a candle lighter slash sock drawer. Okay. There's a couple of there's a couple of receipts. There's a receipt area in there. Your socks don't smell like candles. What if they do? That eh, could be That's worse. That's a bonus. Now, if your candles smell like socks, then you got a prob. So, I'm running over your system here, and I'm and but I'm compelled because 
Every time I open the drawer, I see all these socks that are special to me, but I'm always looking for mm. the black, mm -hmm. like little socks, like the ones I just showed you. Yeah, and your like, default socks. The, yeah, and they're hardly ever there. Right. And like a while back, I bought a whole slew of them, mm. and I was like, they'll all be the same, and I can put them together. But then Lincoln socks, he, I think, all of my stocks have slowly migrated either to, like, the, the, the upside down or they're in Lincoln's drawers mm. because somebody else who's organizing the socks thinks that they're all his. You have to. So you're really well, honest. If your wife, with, if your wife is is the one who handles that, you just have to say, you, "This is my sock." I pair a lot of socks. Lincoln pairs a lot of socks too. But I think you're right that I got to combine forces with my with my oldest son. Yeah, his foot's big enough now. Yeah, he's got a daddy foot now. He's got a wide foot. Um. So I'm I'm really open to this, but I don't know what to do with all my special socks. Uh, you just say cut bait. I just think that I. I, I How long are we gonna I, talk about what we're gonna do with our socks? I don't know. I think we can talk about it for a long time. <laughs> the socks. Um, the specialty. It's a good. It's a good system. Though. Specialty socks. I thought about this as I put the Barbara socks into the shoebox, which you say will never see the light of day. Yeah. I thought to myself. It is possible that I will forget about this box of special socks. And you know what? I'm okay with that because here, here, here's ultimately what I'm doing here. I am eventually going to wear the same thing every day and I'm starting with the socks. Right, we've talked about this. And there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that wearing exactly the same thing every day is the preferred way to dress. I mean, there is absolutely, you cannot talk me out of this. Steve Jobs was a smart man. Very, yes. very creative guy. But you know what? It's a decision he, he didn't want to devote he did his not mind make, to. And I I haven't read or talked to him about that decision. Uh, but a lot of people the, who, on, on, who, who do that, a lot of people who make a lot of decisions do that because they want it to. They don't want to start their day with a lame decision like, "What am I gonna wear?" Here, here's a here's a caveat though. I was told by someone who had personal interactions with Steve Jobs recently that he would walk around um, work with turtleneck, tennis shoes, and cut off jean shorts. Ooh, frequently. Had you ever heard this about Steve Jobs? Well, until you got to cut off jeans, I, I was yeah, seeing. Yeah, this uniform. The exact same uniform except the cut off. Shorts form and like. Well, yes, man's not, gotta have shorts. Not jean shorts, but like the jeans that you would normally the see him in. For the pleated jeans that keynote. he typically had on. Cut with scissors. Simple, efficient, just like, so it's like Apple you know computer. It's like everything that I, I wear the same thing every day. The only problem is sometimes I wish I was wearing shorts. Solution. I'm gonna cut the jeans, and he did that. It is the most immediate solution. Yeah. When, when when the only thing you're thinking about is efficiency, the first thing you do is you just cut the jeans. You don't get another type of clothing. I stand by it. I think it's a great idea. I'm nervous. I mean, what w our comments would just go away. Oh no no no! We can't. No engagement. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd have to. Here's the thing. I'd have to use. I'd have to dress up, like a dressing up to be a character to do our show. But then in my everyday life, I would be wearing the same thing. I, so I'm not. We, keep, we do keep, this is a fond topic of ours because we do go back to it a lot. Uh, I'll add a data point for me, which is um, I don't know how I acquired some like legitimate sweatpants. And I think this is what you talked about. You would ultimately wear sweatpants on, on like a podcast that we did. Probably. Um, and I went a whole day just wearing those sweatpants and I actually went out in public with them on and everything and I'm like, you know, I've seen pictures of Kanye coming out of the, going in and out of the studio and people are talking, look, Kanye is smiling. 2018 is gonna be amazing. And he's wearing just sweatpants. Yeah, what I'm, I'm like, man, if Kanye can do it, he's a fashion icon. He's an everything icon to me. What kind of sweatpants? Just think of the most normal sweatpants, like nothing fashionable at all about them. The bottom is just has that stringy thing, like it doesn't have like the fancier cuff, like none of that. <coughs> I don't want to get us off topic. You don't want to talk about Kanye sweats, but I, I am. 
I really admire what you've done with your socks. Uh, well, I appreciate it. <laughs> now, but let's get back to Mark Ham's question. If all those socks. All, all the socks that I, that don't have pairs, are they. If they came back at the end of your life, that's the no, thing no, but, that throws but, me. Where, but where, what, what do you think? Do you think that, okay, and I'm talking like, we're talking I'm th 30 to 40 socks, easy. In a lifetime? No, right now yeah, in my Yeah, right house. now. Are all the other socks in my house in different places? What percentage of the socks are in my house and where are they in my house? And if I had to, if somebody came to me and said, we're gonna burn your house down if you don't find every one of these socks in the next 24 hours, what methods would I employ to find them and where would, where would they be? You, you might as well be asking me to cure cancer right now. I mean, it's like, that is freaking, it's not fair, man. That's not a fair question. Well, That's I mean, like, I got a couple you, of guesses. Like, what's the key to world peace? Like, no, no, but what, where is the, where are the socks? No, I mean, no, there what, is no answer. There's no answer. Yeah, yeah, but there are answers. Okay, I'm gonna try. Let's think of some possibilities. First of all, 87% of the time, if, if you look at any one unmatched sock, 80% certainty that that other sock is in the house. Like if there was a tracker on it, you would, you would, it would be, you, you could even hear I'd, it. it would, I, I'd go above 95%. 95%? 95% of all socks are still in the house. And then of that 95%, my theory is that 50% of those are in the laundry room. <laughs> Probably behind the, wa the washing machine, at least in my house. They're under the washing machine, they're behind the washing machine. Like I'd say there's, I'm, so in my case, we're talking 15 to 20 individual socks probably in the laundry room. And like when the, when, when, whenever they, we, we, they, we change they, the, the washer well, they're in the future. At, I think this an, it's an equal distribution. Like if you, if, you look at the, if you look at the life cycle of a sock, at every place where there's a transfer, okay, then there's a, there's a big chance that there's gonna be a separation. There's gonna be like a Todd and Copper situation, you know? They're gonna, one of them's gonna grow up, have, one is gonna have to go away for the summer, is gonna come back and the other one's gonna be growing up and they can't be friends anymore. Who's Todd and Copper? You know, Fox and the Hound. Oh. You take off your socks, you throw them in the dirty clothes, but one of them misses the hamper. It's behind the hamper. And then you pick up the hamper and then it, 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 it scoots under the, the mat. Or it's, you know, it, they've, they're separated. They are, they're in different ecosystems. Does, Jay, different get, does Jay get your socks? Uh, no. Barbara is often seen with in a our sock. house just walking around with a sock in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there she goes. I mean, so she is, she's the X factor, man. Oh yeah. A dog is an X, a dog that likes to put socks in her mouth, Cause then that's when an you, X factor. Yeah, oh yeah, that, I mean, you that's crazy when you, cause even without the dog, then you take the hamper, if they're both in the hamper and you dump it out before you're gonna put it in, you maybe you, you pull it out of the hamper and you're throwing everything or trying to sort stuff to go into the washing machine. And then, you know, things are getting separated there. You pull stuff out of the washing machine and you're immediately just gonna throw it in that dryer and you're grabbing the biggest hunks of clothes you can in order to like only do it in three goes. And what's gonna fall to the ground? One of the socks. And then it's gonna get pushed under. Or it's gonna, you know, depending on if you're so a top load or a front happen. load. It's like, I've thought about all this and it's just folly. You, you've done a good <laughs> thing. You've, you've sidestepped all of it. You know there's gonna be, an, there's a sock attrition rate. You know, you're, you're constantly, it's like skin cells. They're just dying. Right. And you know what? You don't need to stop and think about saving them. You gotta move forward. Just you gotta right live up. with the skin you got. Now, Live in the skin you're in, not the skin that's falling off. Now, were you a part of this conversation? Uh, it was either a, a show or a podcast or I don't know. And maybe we talked about it on. You just on, don't know if I was there. Uh, on Good Mythical Morning. But I. Was, I, I was probably there. there. There is a guy who insists on, ha he believes that there's a right sock and a left sock. <laughs> He believes that there's a sock for your right foot and a sock for your left foot. Now, he understands that socks are not made for right feet and left feet. I mean, there are some specialty socks that are made, obviously toe socks. I, I w I've never heard contributed or been a, a part of okay. or, or glanced at this conversation. So this is a fact, there is a dude 
Uh, it, I think it was probably on one of these like ridiculous reality shows where it was like something a couple was arguing like over. Big Brother or something? N no, like I'm talking like a like a Dr. Phil type of thing, you know, it was like, <laughs> this man. Springer. Insists on wearing his socks on his left and his right foot and his wife wants to kill him because of it. <laughs> on the next, Dr. Phil. But the, um, <laughs> he, here's what he did. He, what? he, no, no, he believed that once he wore a sock. It became that. Oh, it stretched to it oriented, fit. It, it oriented, oriented itself as a right foot or left foot. And he swore up and down that he could put on or left foot for the right foot and he would know. So he made his wife label his socks right and left. And I think he went as far, so you had to match. Don't the, bring your wife into this. You I had, mean, you label had, your own dang socks. You had to match the pair, but then, you had, then it had to be the right and the left. And so, I mean, this was, it's absolutely nuts, but, so you haven't heard of that before. But that, but that guy, when he loses, see, I've gone completely to the opposite end of the spectrum, where I'm not even, it's not, I'm not just mixing, I'm not just mixing left and right, I was already doing that. I'm not just mixing pairs of socks, now I'm mixing who the socks are for, because I'm sharing them amongst the family. Right. I mean, and as soon as Shepard's foot is big enough, we're all gonna be wearing the same socks, and if I can get my wife to just wear my socks too, we could all be wearing the same socks. She is three feet shorter than you. <laughs> How much shorter or is her foot than yours? It's, her sock, your sock. It's significant. Your no so shock. I can't say it. Would go all the way to her to her th knee. <laughs> but you know what? It would make your life simpler. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. But what what about other things? Because why, think, why is Jesse wearing stockings all of a sudden all the time? What else have you lost of significance in the past, let's say, year? I'm serious? I'm really digging deep for this one. I'm trying to think of something else that I've lost. You lose things all the time, but then I find them usually. Like I, I lose things that are really important to me, and so I, everything has to stop and I have to find it right then, like keys, wallet, ID, credit card, middle child. You know, it's like mm. things that, okay, this is serious. Um, I, I I really can't think of anything else that I've lost that would be in that box at the end of my life. Do you? I mean, do you have something else that you've lost? Now, yeah, so interestingly, uh, I don't lose Wallet keys. I mean, I'm not saying I don't misplace it from time to time, and and, to, and, and I do and now, and I do have the tile because the tile was a sponsor, so I, I I've got the tile on my keys in my wallet. Uh, but my phone, my keys, in my wallet. Ninety nine days out of a hundred, when I'm leaving, I just I, I know where they're at. Even if and I don't even leave them in the same place. It's just I, there's a couple of places that I might leave things. I don't really so lose then, those kinds of things. So then, what have you lost? Um, what are you looking for? I lose sunglasses. Now you don't lose the sunglasses, you have prescription sunglasses and they're super yeah. expensive and you wear them religiously. I have like cheap, multiple pairs of yeah. cheap, you know, less than $20 sunglasses. And, but the, I did have a pair of those Ray-Bans that folded up into a square, which was unnecessary, I will say. Um, who needs it to be a square, really? But I lost those. You know why? Because they fold it up yeah, into a square. It's half the size. They need to. Whenever you take them off, they need to expand to the size of like a f unfurled flag. That's what they really have needed to be. Uh, I. It's just anything that's not a part of my routine is susceptible to being lost. Um, but I can't think of anything. I, I did. You know, well, I lost my phone last year. First ever phone. I've never had a phone break. And I've never lost a phone in you know ten years of, or however many years it's been longer than that of cell phone use, uh, but you know the story of I think I told it on the podcast of having the phone fall out of my pocket while skiing at Sundance and then, um, but I didn't I technically didn't lose it because I could locate it with find my iPhone on like 
for the next three weeks because it was so cold and the you battery. You were separated from it, but you didn't lose it, is that what you're saying? Yeah, but I lost it because I never got it. Um, I just don't, I just don't know why, even if, even if you were prone to lose things that were important to you, like if, if they showed up when you, on your deathbed in a box, that would just be very frustrating. Uh, that would you, be horrible, you, you, wouldn't it? No, no, I actually think this is a beautiful proposition. Really, because I think it's like, I think if it, man, I even, I, I finally gave up on that, and it's like, well, you know, and then you know the box is coming when you're dying, it's like, man, I can't find this, and I know it's gonna show up to thumb its nose at me when I'm, when I'm dying. Well, I wasn't picturing it like that, like it was a, the, everyone knows that there's this box that's brought to you. I was, what I was saying is that if I was about to die and somebody was like, Rhett, we have this box, this you know magical box because this box really can, can't exist, but it's everything that you ever lost. It's mostly socks, but dig <laughs> through those and you'll get to something important. I think that it would be like, it would be a way to, like it would be like a interesting anti catalog of my life because I'd be like, oh yeah, I remember that thing from this point. I think it would be amazing. I would love that. It. I mean, and then you'd be like, I didn't even know I lost that. Well, I just forgot. Think I, for, I forgot to think about it for a while. Well, you know, let, let me. I, I do remember something that I lost and then I found. And I'm gonna I'm gonna run it through the grid of how I felt and see if maybe you're right about this box, even if it is the end of your life and you're dying. I know what you're gonna talk about right now. Um, I was because I'm actually driving the FJ this week because the car's in the shop. Chrissy's got to drive her car's in the shop. Got to drive my car. So then I'm driving the FJ because you don't drive it. You don't need it every day. So I've been driving that thing, and it reminded me that. Last time I was driving that thing for a long time, um, it wouldn't, the, the gear stick wouldn't work, right? And then I gave it back to you and you're like, gear shift won't work. And uh, eventually you got upset because it would go into drive and would go into park, but it wouldn't go into like the lower drive gears, right? Like it wouldn't go into like drive three, two, or one, like if you wanted to downshift manually. It was very difficult. Which I, which by the way, I do a lot, like driving in the hills and stuff. Of course. I like downshift, I like to use the transmission to slow down, not the brakes, that is a good, according Every, to car talk, that's a good thing to do. Well, everyone should be doing that. You could ruin your brakes in one downhill descent. Yeah, everybody should do that's that. That's redundant. Um, But you couldn't, for some reason you couldn't do that, the gear shift thing was broken, and but I didn't fix it, it's, it's your responsibility now. Thanks. So then you took it in and uh, I mean you can tell the story, right? They came back to you and, and told you what was wrong with it. You remember? Oh yeah, but I Oh don't. you don't, yeah, so this isn't the story you thought I was gonna tell. So no, you no, no, yeah. Okay. I, no, I, yeah, I so remember then, now, but so I then, don't remember what it was. Well you came up to me and uh, you put something in my hand and it was, you were like, this is yours, isn't it? And I'm like, yeah, that's my, that's my Leatherman tool. <laughs> it's a, it's a knife with all this, uh, it's like a Swiss Army knife, but it's, you know, it's bigger. Yeah. And, and uh, I was like, dang, I bet I lost that. And you're like, well, the mechanic found it inside of the transmission of the FJ and it had, it had lodged down in there. Uh, you well, know, it didn't make it all the way to the transmission, but it was to the gear shift. It was in the housing, and it literally wouldn't let the gear shift go. And I was like, "That's where that thing went." I remember putting it down next to the gear shift, and it, well, and it's amazing because you know there's like this, and I felt very small, like little slit that like the the well, gear shift hand that travels through. Yeah, but there's like a little there's like a leather thing that goes around the hole and like. Goes up and, and like it, it was snugs loose. up on the gear shift. It, it, it was a little bit loose, and it had snuck under there and like gone in, into the upside down. Um, but when I got that thing back, I was like, "Man, this is great!" Because I put this in the the upper cup holder of my car, so that then it's a makeshift platform to then p set my phone on perfectly, so I can look at use my phone as a GPS. And with that, it's been gone for the past month. I can't see the bottom half of my GPS in the holder. And I was really bummed out about that because of course, I'm not allowed to use the actual knife part of my knife. I just use it as a platform for right. for my phone. 
so I was pretty pumped to get that thing back. I'm sorry that it, it cost you some money to fix your uh, <laughs> your gear shift, but totally worth it from my perspective. So, and which I think goes, but back, I wasn't dying. If I was dying, I was like, man, I'd rather not know that this thing was gone that whole time. You wouldn't even remember it, but yeah, you probably wouldn't even remember it at that point if you, when you were dying. What did you think I was gonna say that I lost? Oh, I thought you were gonna talk about the blood oath. Oh Be yeah, that, oh I would love because to get that, that that's back. That's the perfect thing, so I, you know the story, we did a blood oath in middle school uh, saying that we were gonna grow up together and create things together. It happened, it worked, the blood oath worked. We wrote a contract on, on a piece of paper, two different pieces of paper and we said, we will, something to the effect of, we will create something together. We're gonna like work together to create something. And it, we, it was very nebulous because we didn't know what that would be or whatever. We cut our palms with rocks, and sharp the, rocks. And then we smeared our blood on the two. We didn't actually, I don't know if we actually shook hands. We did, I don't think. It was more about taking blood and putting it on a sign, sheet of paper. It was signing it. And like, I, there was my blood and your blood on each piece of paper and we each had a copy. And you immediately lost yours. No, I lost, I mean, I probably lost mine. I probably put mine in my desk with a bunch of other stuff, but you kept yours in your wallet until what age? College. No. Um, high school. High school, I was definitely 16 because I was driving and I was like, I remember the last, I'd lo I lost my wallet it was at that party at Trent Hamilton's house when his parents went out of town. Oh, I remember that night. And then I had lost my wallet there. And then when I eventually found my wallet, it wasn't in there. And or like, I, it's very fuzzy, but I remember that I recovered the wallet but the thing wasn't in it or I realized that at some point it was no longer in it and that I had lost it, the oath. I'd love to have that back. Yeah, see, you'd love to have that, and you'd love to have it on your deathbed. It it would be that would be a good moment to say, "Wow, that's like a, um, it's like a time capsule moment." Yeah, it's ironic that something so important to you you could still lose. So then, when you you know, even when you're dying, you could be glad to see it. Well, the first part of the question, you know, what happens to all that stuff? And I think that your Leatherman story illustrates this. Is that there's a perfectly logical explanation for everything that you've ever lost, right? So it isn't like anything that you've ever lost was like a leprechaun took it from you. Like that's it, that's not the kind of thing that happens, right? It, it's a, it, there's a sort of like probably oh, not. I can't. Of course, that's where the thing is. Of course, that's where the sock is. Of course, that's where the oath is. Mm -hmm. uh, there is that one crevice that you just haven't creased. But it's amazing how often, even though it's 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 obvious where these things end up, most likely, how often it still happens. It's just, but I think you'd. I think the explanation to the first part of your question, Mark, would just be kind of like, oh, yeah, that's what happened to it. Boring, you know what I mean. Slip through the freaking crack in the gear shift. Do you remember about a year? Boring. A year ago, there was that. I think this was on Twitter. There was the the person who found her um, elderly mother's wedding ring, like diamond ring, was lost in like the backyard, and then it. They were pulling up carrots in the garden and they pulled up a carrot. And it had a freaking ring And it had it. her freaking, it had, it had grown through the wedding ring and you could like see that it was, it, the carrot was bigger on either side of the wedding ring. It was like, you know, if, if a, just like if a tree grows around a barbed wire fence, that's what it looked like. Yeah. Um, I mean, Many years later, I don't think it was. It, might, it was much more than. And a that year, I perfectly think, proves the point. The losing was unspectacular. The losing was fell off while gardening, went into the grass, but the finding was spectacular. Plucking a carrot out of the ground, and that's like that's kind of what the box at the end of your life represents. But, the, but yeah, and and to take the analogy further, that carrot had to die for her to get that ring back. Mm. So you think they ate it? You know, you think the they ring? Didn't eat the carrot to get to the ring? Definitely, they, they, they boiled it. 
That's how they prepared it. Could have picked a better way. But I, ultimately, ultimately, the 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 goal should be to get to a place where it doesn't matter if you lose things, where you're not attached to any material object to the extent where you care what happens to it. Well, it's interesting Isn't because- Isn't that the ultimate goal? On a philosophical level, on like a, on like a wellness level? Yeah, to recognize that, okay, even, okay, let's take our wedding rings right, right now, okay? There's sentimental value attached to our wedding rings. There is significantly more sentimental value attached to your wedding ring, not because your marriage is more sentimental than mine, but because <laughs> I had this ring made yeah. for me and, 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 and for my marriage. So it's as old as my marriage right? in this form. I'm sure that the elements in it are much older. But your ring. But mine is my grandfather, my papa, Clyde, uh, who passed away in 1998. Uh, this is his wedding ring when he married my nanny, who I guess uh, two podcasts ago, I told you about visiting her I over the holidays. Said, I thought you just said Tupac. Two podcasts ago, who Tupac was very good friends with. <laughs> it's like, well, where is this going? <laughs> who Tupac dedicated who many Tupac, of his yeah. raps to, my yeah. my nanny and my, my my papa Clyde. So this is Clyde's wedding ring, um, and then when he passed away, Christy and I had just started dating, and that was one of the first times she met my family was coming to the funeral, like meeting like, uh, I don't know, it might have been the first time she met Nanny. I don't, I'll have to either, ask her. Well, either but way. I, that's beside the point. The, the, the point the is The ring is got, incredibly valuable. Yeah, and, it's his, and, and it's the, his wedding ring, and, the way that and now you, it's my wedding And the way ring. that you, you fidget with your ring a lot more than I do, you take your freaking ring off all the time. Yeah, I've could, seen you drop it in weird places. Yeah, I drop it. I've dro I drop it in meetings on a weekly basis. But, I but, could. It could. It could stroll down a, a sewer grate at any moment. But let's explore for a moment. That'd be horrifying to me. What is it like? Materially speaking, is your ring more valuable? You so. So I'm saying. So like the, the it's the value of your ring is in. Obviously, it's in the intrinsic value of the metals or whatever, but the value that you've attached to it that gives it more value value than mine. The sentimental value. Is a value that exists in your mind. It's just a value that exists in your mind, right? So I'm not saying that it's not significant. I'm not trying to downplay it, right? I, I really wanna I really wanna explore this because Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that value made of? Like legitimately, is it not true that that value is just very simply a neural pathway in your mind that uh, is connected to your grandfather? And so basically there's a certain collection of neurons in your brain that fire in a certain pattern. I don't know how the brain works uh, and it's, all the value that you attach to this physical object that you wear around your one f f specific finger that has been chosen for by our culture to signify that you're married, you've attached extra value to that because of whose it was, who, whose other finger it was on. Let and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, I'm just saying that is it ultimately a good thing that we have the capacity to to attach that much value to it, and what it, what does that even mean? What is that even real value? Well, and let me tell you another quick story. Tell me another in story. order to explore this further because it has a it has a twist ending, which will I think bring up a, a related question. Maybe answer your question. Night before last. Uh, Christy relayed what she had done and what had happened. Um, she said she was cleaning out drawers in the in the dining room, uh, which is something that Christy and I, it's a hobby of both of ours, like to clean out drawers. And she said, I found the, the handwritten log from last year when Lily was just out of her back surgery and she was recovering and we had to log all of the medication she was taking to take it at the proper times and also how much food she was eating because she had she 
had to gain weight and she had complications associated with the surgery that meant that she had to, you know, we had to get more calories in her um, for reasons that aren't, I don't need to go into. But anyway, um, so this, basically one sheet of paper was an artifact from that moment in Lily's life when, you know, it was a big test for her. So uh, Lily was at school, Christy said, I went into her room and I put it on her bed and I put a note on it that said, um, just in case you've forgotten how strong you are because she was talking about how she was having some challenges at school or whatever, just look at this. And then it was that, that she attached the note to that lock. And then uh, Christy says, um, and so Lily got home and you know, it, was, it, it meant a lot to her to get that and it was very sweet and she said, so um, of course I think what I'm gonna do, and this is Christy talking, of course I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take a picture of the log and then throw it away. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I was like, I was shocked that she said that, but it's, it's interesting, right? I that think she, she's on the right track. She's transferring it to the cloud. Now, if you could transfer that to a locket and wear it around your neck, maybe that's, I'm gonna make, there, there's two different things going on here. It's like the, the wedding band is something that's on your person, like this is like when I get naked, I st I'm still wearing this. Good. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, it's good for like a number of reasons because it's a wedding band. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if it were, if she was gonna like burn that 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 thing and then put the ashes in a locket and carry it around around her neck as a symbol of uh, her own inner yeah. strength, that could be meaningful. But just having a sheet of paper that you're gonna shove in a drawer and then maybe lose or or you know it's gonna like deteriorate or something you might as well digitize it so in the event of a fire, you're not running trying to find it. Um, so I, I think that's the threshold. If you can't carry it on your person even when you're naked, <laughs> I think then you should move it to the cloud. Like well, I, can carry a, I can carry a, a note while naked. I mean, I'm pretty sure I could do that. Without the use of your hands. I think that's. I see, can find a place. Because I. Are we closer to answering your question, which was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're, you're all over it, right? Because basically what Christy is doing when she says that she's going to take a picture of this is she's saying that the thing that is valuable is the particular arrangement of that information, right? Um, which can be captured digitally. Uh, and at some point could even be recreated physically or like through all a 3D the, printer. All the pictures that we scan to put in our book, now that they're A in our book, and then be yeah, scanned. I don't, I, it, to me, there, there's like no that box of artifacts in our office. We now, could lose it because it's been archived. You could burn it. You could just soon as burn it. But now? You're ta you're ta I, actually, you're talking about two very, very interesting things, right? Which there's there's a there's another podcast in this whole this whole thing, but and, and we, we can't talk about it forever. But the first thing you're talking about is um, just what is it that we're attaching the value to, like because is and then the second part is what is attached to value? Because it kind of goes back to this, the, the conversation that we had. Um, you know, uh, shout out to the Red MC Twitter. I, t <laughs> I use, and I don't shout out to the Twitter very much. I mean, I, I really don't. So, I mean, you gotta give me a chance. Uh, I tweeted, I told you about that, re the restaurant experience I had at Dialogue Restaurant in, uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, and it was this, it was a gift uh, for my in-laws to go to this incredible restaurant uh, that was like a 12 course meal and the chef was. 12 course meal. Absolutely amazing. And I told you about the story, the story associated with every dish, right? Yeah. And the fact that he had certain albums playing while you were eating in this restaurant, <clears throat> and he was, and he, and he said, "I'm specifically playing albums that really make sense as an album." Uh, in fact, some of these albums, like he, he he referenced one of the Roots albums, and he was like, "This is actually not that great of an album if you listen to it on shuffle, because it's the, actually the arrangement of the songs and the story that they tell and the and the order that they tell them that is where the beauty in the album is." 
And so he said, that's specifically the way that I've arranged this meal. So I told you the fascinating thing about this is that in every course in the meal, uh, there was a piece, there was an ingredient from the previous course that was looking back to the past and there was an ingredient from the future course, the next course that was looking to the future. So it was linked, it and all so bridged. Everything was linked together. And then there was even things on top of that like this this particular one is inspired by this painting and there's the painting and the painting was up in the restaurant and he would point to it and we had the great, we were at the bar, we could see him make these dishes and one of the most incredible meal experiences of my life. Now, if you just isolated one of those dishes and just brought it out and ate it, I'd be like, this is an incredible meal. But, I, you know, a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich is an incredible meal. I mean, the flavor combination in a Chick-fil-A Chick -fil chicken sandwich, it doesn't get much better than that. A piece of pizza from a fine pizza establishment, it doesn't get much better than that in terms of flavor in your mouth, right? But the story connected with a piece of pizza is that, well, it's from this restaurant, and they make it all, but the story connected to any particular course in this meal that I was having, the value add from my brain to the meal experience that I was having that then impacted the physical sensation that was actually taking place in my mouth, which was then sending more signals back to my brain, which enhanced the whole experience. That's that's humanity. That's that's how we interact with life. We're constantly attaching value to just arrangements of atoms, right? And I'm not saying that there is or well, ones and zeros. I mean, first I mean, of all, we can't help it. We're programmed to do this, right? Our bodies are designed to uh, to work in a particular environment, an environment that we're actually not in right now, an environment that we used to be in. You know, we're, we're Stone Age hardware running modern day software, and we can't help but attach value to things because there's an adaptive advantage to attaching value to things, things that are significant to us. But I think one of our challenges is not to say, okay, you should think that your ring is, you should just take a picture of your ring and throw, flush it down the toilet. I'm not saying that you should do that, but wouldn't it be a healthier place mentally and emotionally if you could do that without any real regret? And you may say that's a, I, I, that's a, not a life worth living, and I do, but you'll never get to that point because you're a human and you can't just deny your humanity. But what steps can we take where, and your ring is a bad example because that ring is not a vice. It's, it's a beautiful memory of your grandfather and a beautiful symbol of your love for your wife. And so there's a lot of, there, there is, it symbolizes things that have meaning way beyond the metal, right? But we attach value and significance to a, thing, to a lot of things that don't matter and actually don't sim symbolize things that have any real I meaning. Know. I, I think I think you're just, um, you're construing possessions with, in like knickknacks with keepsakes. But, this I the mean, I think but the thing that makes that value is the story that you've attached to it. Yeah, but it was there, man. It was just like, you know, if 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 I if I reach under this table and pull out Abraham Lincoln's top hat, like that would be Don't a magical get me wrong. moment. I would be like, you know what? I just It I would mean so much. I, I I yeah, it would mean so much to me if you had Abraham Lincoln's top hat. I would think it was super cool. I'm just saying that whereas it can be a super cool thing, there's probably a lot of um like the actual, like I mean, they the keep the Constitution under under. They suck it down in a vault every night, and then they pick it up in the elevator so people can come gawk at it under close supervision. Because it's like, and if we did, it was there, and man. If, well, and if we didn't have the ability again, because this is the thing that, interestingly, you know, an animal, an animal other than the human animal, doesn't have the capacity to attach sentimental value. To things to to the degree that we do, right? I mean, obviously, you, uh, Coco, the sign language gorilla. I'm sure that she, she, in fact, I think she had some possessions that meant a lot to her. I'm not saying that yeah. they don't have the capacity, but not nearly the capacity that we do. And then you talk about robots, and when are they going to become indiscernible from us? And are they going to have the ability? Like, cause we're, that's one of the things we do. We're just constantly attaching value, and we're going to attach value to the robots because we're gonna tell ourselves a story about them. And once we have the story straight, 
that robot is gonna be just as significant as a person. And we're gonna be like, this is my best friend. Yeah, he's a robot, but who cares? But is that robot gonna feel the same way? Is it gonna have the, are we gonna have to program that robot with the capacity to tell itself lies and tell itself stories about things in order to have, to, to, for there to be significance in its life? Oh, that's the question, Link. That's the question tonight. Maybe. I just, I think it's, I think it's undeniably healthy to have a few real things in like the real hard world that you can touch and feel and taste if you need to in order to maintain a connection with something meaningful. But don't take it too far. And then if you lose it, just move on. It'll come back in a box on your deathbed. And shouldn't you throw that, as soon as you had the technology to throw that wedding ring into a in, into a 3D copier, should you do it? Nope, because the one thing that's valuable about it is the one part that can't be, can't be, it, it can't be conveyed. It's, it's that this one, this particular thing was wrapped around his finger, now it's wrapped around my finger. So, if, and a replica of it would be a replica. Okay. I mean, you buy those, you buy replicas in the, in the museum gift shop. So, what if somebody took me? No, what if somebody took one of your children it's and put them in a, a person in a gift and, it, and put them in a three D in a three D copier and made a perfect copy of your child? Everything was intact, memories, everything exactly the same, and then they killed the the original child. <laughs> Would you, what kind of value would you associate? Would you say, oh, I can't, I can't love this new child, even though it would be like Lando saying, Daddy, it's just me, Lando. God, let's, I mean, <laughs> at least make it about do the dogs, man. It's horrifying. I, okay, but it's a legitimate question, man. Okay, Jade. Jade, and I'm not talking about a clone, because a clone is a separate being. I'm saying legitimately like a copy, like there's some technology that, organizes all the matter in exactly the same way and then kills the existing thing. And like, well, I mean, what kind of value, would you be like, yeah, that's Jade too? It's just a, yeah, I, I, could, I could conduct a relationship and ultimately, for the most part, it would, it would be the same moving forward, but it doesn't have the same, it's, again, it's just a, a, a keepsake and a relationship are just different things, the apples and oranges, I think it's just a, you know, but you have relationships with keepsakes. They represent. No, no, you don't. It's not a relationship. It's a. But it's all about the story. It's a tangible that you're telling nostalgia. Yourself. I'm going to steal your ring, and you're going to think you lost it. And then at the end of your life, I'm going to give you a box, and the only thing that's going to be in there is that wedding ring. Okay. And I'll say, you remember that question that that dude asked us that one time on your biscuits? That's why I did this. It was a big experiment to teach you a lesson and then to give you a special present at the end of your life. Well, listen, I'll I'll commit to thinking about it some, but let me sleep on it. I'm kind of sleepy at this point. <laughs> I'm resorting to saying, "Hey, can we end this podcast?" I'm kind of sleepy. I'm sleepy. <laughs> I just don't. Uh, but I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll twinkle with my ring and I'll think about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you know what? You think about it too. Let us know what you think. We'll speak at you this time next week. Is that a deal? Yeah.